All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Cherry Bomb Ball Python. The Cherry Bomb is a completely white snake with bright red eyes. As a matter of fact, there's quite a few different ways you can actually make a Cherry Bomb. You can actually go over to morphmarket.com and do a search for Cherry Bomb, and it'll give you one way you can actually make it. Well, let me tell you, there are probably dozens and dozens of ways that you can make a Cherry Bomb. Some of them have really dramatic effects with a really bright white snake, and some of them are not quite as bright white. Really depends on what genes are in the mix when you're making your cherry bomb. So today I want to jump over to the internet and I want to show you the various ways that you can make a cherry bomb ball python. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here on morphmarket.com and I wanna show you the traditional way that you can make a cherry bomb. If you actually come over here and search for cherry bomb, it'll separate it into multiple genes and some of those genes actually consist of the Super Mojave. This is what a Super Mojave looks like. And this is a really visually dominant snake. If you have anything that is a white snake in the blue-eyed leucistic complex, usually it'll completely mask all the other genes underneath the white snake. As a matter of fact, this one's actually a banana super Mojave and the banana is usually extremely visually dominant when you mix it in with other combinations and in this case it completely masks the banana you can't see any of the yellow color from the banana pretty amazing and if you actually have something listed as like a banana super Mojave usually the only way that you can tell there's banana in there is if you start with like a super banana where everything gets one copy of the gene or sometimes you can actually take a UV light and show shine it on the snake and sometimes it'll fluoresce you get kind of the pattern underneath the white snake and sometimes you can use that trick to kind of figure out which genes are in your blue-eyed leucistic if you have other genes in the mix but it doesn't always work sometimes you can actually see other genes kind of bleeding through with the UV light and here is if you actually take the super Mojave and you work in albino that's how you get the cherry bomb and this is the albino and when it comes to visually dominant morphs the albino is probably number one it's kind of a limitation of the albino you mix it with any other genes and essentially what you get is you get an albino looking snake that is kind of has a jumbled up pattern in most cases sometimes you can do some stuff with it but a lot of times it's so visually dominant you end up with pretty much a yellow and white snake and kind of the cool thing about the cherry bomb is what you're doing is you're taking the all white snake the blue-eyed leucistic and when you add albino to it the blue-eyed leucistic completely masks the albino and the only thing you're left with, with the, from the albino is the bright red eyes and that is where you get the cherry bomb. So this is what happens if you take the albino and you work it into the super Mojave you get the cherry bomb. Take a look at this. This is pretty amazing. And some of the cherry bombs, they have a little bit of color. You can Sometimes you can see a little bit of the albino kind of bleeding through because it's so visually dominant. And sometimes you, in certain combinations, you get a super white snake with bright red eyes. Pretty awesome. As a matter of fact, I was looking and kind of wondering what the price is on this one. It's kind of hard to hit. And this one is actually still for sale. $1,500, so it's it's kind of hard to hit because you're using a recessive on top of a super and making a snake that there's not a whole lot of them out there. You know, and I, th I think the demand would be pretty high for these and the supply would be pretty low and that's probably what drives the price up. So take a look at this snake. This is actually the Mystic Potion, which is the combination of the Mystic and the Mojave genes, if you actually look at the genes. And usually the Mystic and the Mojave, they're, they're both in the blue eyed leucistic, but a lot of times with Mystic, if you work it into some of the other genes in the blue eyed leucistic complex, you end up with a snake that is not all white in some cases. And you can actually still make a cherry bomb using a Mystic Mojave working in the albino, and this is what you get. Take a look at this, this is kind of another version of the cherry bomb this is the albino mystic mojave or albino mystic potion and if you, you kind of know where i'm going with this you can actually use any two genes from the blue-eyed leucistic complex and make a different version of the cherry bomb and i'm thinking maybe in a lot of these combos when you start with a purple snake like a mystic potion or a purple passion or something like that or like a super mystic where it's not all white to start with and you work in albino i'm thinking a lot of 
the yellow kind of bleeds through some of those combinations. But if you actually work lesser or butter into your blue-eyed leucistic complex, I, I'm pretty sure those two genes worked with any other genes in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. You end up with a really super bright white snake, which will give you a really bright white snake with bright red eyes. And if you're wondering what genes are in the blue-eyed leucistic, there's a whole bunch of them. So if you took your lesser or your butter and you bred it with like a lesser butter Mojave Russo bamboo phantom special <laughs> mystic mocha all those genes are in the blue-eyed leucistic and you actually make uh, a white snake or kind of a purplish snake and you can make a, a, a version of the cherry bomb working albino into those combinations so here is another approach you can actually make a different version of a cherry bomb, an all white snake with red eyes, and that is starting with pied. So pied is usually it's it's usually a, a snake that has splotches of white through the pied, and kind of the trick for the pied is to have an all white snake with no color at all. And sometimes it's kind of hard to actually kind of push the pied to the limit where you end up with an all white snake. It doesn't always work 100%, but probably your best way to actually get an all white pied is to use Russo and, and make a Russo pied. And a Russo pied is also called the Pinto pied. And one of the things I like about the Russo in working in with pied is you get a really high white snake in a lot of cases. And a lot of times you actually don't see any color on the head, which you do with some other genes. You get kind of a random little splotches here and there, but you can actually get a completely white snake. Take a look at this one. This is a Russo pied. I'd say maybe half of the Russo pieds are completely white with with uh, uh, black eyes. So this would actually be uh, a Russo pied with black eyes. I'm pretty sure it's black eyes. It's not really a black eyed leucistic. It's not a blue eyed leucistic. It would be, uh, well, the, the kind of the weird thing about this is the Russo is actually in the blue eyed leucistic complex. So you actually could end up with blue eyes on this pied, but it's not really a blue eyed leucistic. And here's what happens if you actually work albino into a Russo pied. Take a look at this. This is probably one of the best uh, cherry bombs that I've ever seen because you're starting with pied, which seems to have even a more intense white than some of your blue eyed leucistics. So I would say this is probably one of the ultimate cherry bombs that you can make. The problem is, is if you actually make a whole bunch of uh, albino pinto pieds, essentially you won't always get the all white snake with the red eyes. You're going to end up with some of them have little splotches of color here and there, probably 50% of the time you're going to end up with a cherry bomb. So here is another way you can actually use pied to your advantage, working other genes into the pied to make a cherry bomb. And you can actually work spider into the pied. And the problem with this is when you work spider into the pied, a lot of times it'll push all the pattern just to the head and you'll have a little bit of pattern just on the head. And this one actually has, uh, this is actually a bumblebee pied with the spider and the pastel. So you can see the color on the head's changed a little bit, a little more yellow from the pastel. I've actually seen like banana pied where the head looks like a banana and then the rest of the body is completely white. It's kind of crazy. And you can actually make a spider pied. Once in a while you actually end up with a spider pied that is completely white. Take a look at this. This is actually the spider pied which is also called the white wedding. A white wedding is a spider pied that is completely white with no color on the head. And if you're actually trying to make the cherry bomb with the spider pied white weddings, I say your odds are a lot less than doing it with the pinto pied. I'd say probably maybe one in 20 snakes, you'll actually get the all white spider pied, but you can actually do it once in a while. And if you actually work the spider pied into the albino, most of the times actually what you're gonna get is you're gonna end up with a snake that looks like this. This is an albino spider pied. So the spider is essentially moving all the color just to the head and you get almost, you know, almost a cherry bomb except the spider pied is actually having color on the head. But one once in a while, I'd say maybe one in 20, you're gonna end up with a white wedding cherry bomb. <laughs> Take a look at this. This is probably one of the best cherry bombs that I've seen uh, working any kind of pied into a cherry bomb. The problem is, is with this, this you know, this <laughs> the white wedding uh, cherry bomb, it's also called an albino spider pie, is your odds are pretty slim to actually hit a combination like this. And I was just kind of wondering about the price on this one. This is actually $1,200 not too bad. It actually sold a female in 2020. Pretty awesome. 
So take a look at this. Believe it or not, you can actually make a cherry bomb starting with a completely black snake. <laughs> when I first discovered this, it really blew me away that you can actually make a cherry bomb starting with a black snake. This is actually a super cinnamon. So the cinnamon looks almost like a normal ball python, except it has kind of a darker background. And you breed two cinnamons together. 25% of the time, you get a super cinnamon, which is a completely patternless, all black snake pretty amazing and sometimes they can be uh, sometimes you, you'll have kind of like a reddish brown kind of a color they're not always as jet black as this and this is what happens if you take the super cinnamon and combine it with an albino take a look at this this is really surprising that you take that work with an albino and you end up with a completely white snake with red eyes it is really surprising and kind of the interesting thing I find with the super cinnamon uh, albinos is a lot of times you'll have these little tiny specks of orange all through the sink. It looks like someone like took a pepper shaker with little orange specks and just kind of speckled the snake with little orange specks. It's kind of interesting. And there's actually another way you can actually make the same exact snake and that is using the super black pastel which is even a darker snake if you make the super. Uh, you take two black pastels and you breed them together. 25% of the time you get the super and then you work the super black pastel into an albino and essentially you get exactly Exactly the same thing as the cinnamon you get an albino super black pastel which looks exactly like a version of the cherry bomb pretty amazing combination as a matter of fact I was kind of wondering what the price was on this I haven't really looked at the prices this is about $1,300 so these can be really expensive pretty much any version of the cherry bomb pretty awesome so here is another way, the final way that I want to show you that you can make uh, another version of the Cherry Bomb and that is starting with a black eyed leucistic and there's several ways you can actually use uh, work in a black eyed leucistic. This is actually the super fire. So you take two fires and bring them together, 25% of the time you end up with a super fire and the super fire is kind of interesting because sometimes you'll have little splotches of yellow coming down the top of the snake and sometimes you'll get a completely white one. As a matter of fact, I pulled up a white one here take a look at this this is a super fire that is completely stark white really awesome snake and has jet black eyes so this is the black eyed leucistic and there are other genes in the black eyed leucistic that are compatible with the fire there's the fire the flame and the sulfur so you can actually use uh, a super fire you could use a super flame you could use a super sulfur or any combination of those genes so you can use like a fire flame or fire sulfur or any com all the combinations like that and then you work in albino and take a look at this you actually get a black eyed leucistic cherry bomb take a look at that that is pretty amazing and this one it seems like the eyes are just really glowing i couldn't believe how, gl how bright the eyes were on this and it's kind of interesting on this version this is actually the super fire which has little splotches of yellow coming right down the top and i'd say probably about you know half the time maybe 50% of the time when you're working with super fire you see some of these little splotches of yellow as a matter of fact if you actually use a super sulfur you'll probably get more yellow coming in on the snake kind of a yellow splotch cherry bomb instead of the really stark white but this is another way you can actually make a cherry bomb using some other genes that you may not have considered all right, so it is time for the question of the day and Michael Westcott asks who is keeping track of the world's first ball pythons? And that is a very good question. So the world's first is if you actually make a combination of genes that no one has ever produced before, that is called the world's first. And you can actually take credit for it. And the pretty much the only place that I know that you can actually claim the world's first is over on the world of ball pythons. So essentially go over there and you just type in in their the kind of a database. You can just type in any combination. And if you bring up a combination of genes and look at the snake usually in the very bottom it'll say this was first produced by and it'll give the name and the company that actually produced it and usually it'll give the date that it was first produced and it's kind of interesting to kind of look through and sometimes a lot of combinations we don't know who produced it the very first time but I'd say if you actually think you produce the world's first you can actually look over on the world of ball pythons and if it's not over there you could send them a picture and take credit for producing the very first combination of that world's first. 
So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.